If you like Tower of God and you want to see a prequel story, then check out Towers and Gods. Episode 3 was our best episode, so if you want to start there, or start from the very beginning, check the link down below. The Kuhn family is a notorious family in Tower of God. Obviously, the first great family that we were properly introduced to. Yuri is technically like the first 10 family member we ever met, but the Kuhn family is the first one that we actually heard of in context. We got to see a little bit of backstory, especially in the anime. So today, we're breaking down the Kuhn family. Pretty simple, not a very long video, just kind of going over what we know about this family in particular. So obviously, the Kuhn family is one of the 10 great families, meaning that the head of the Kuhn family, Kuhn Edwan, was one of Jihad's companions when he entered the tower and climbed. Now, according to history and according to everyone, there's 10 companions that entered the tower with Jihad, but of course we know now there was actually 12. Edwan was the spear bearer of the group. If you want to hear more about Edwan in particular, check out my lore video on Edwan. But essentially, you know, Edwan was the spear bearer. He worked a lot with Hendolock Blood Matter, who was the defender. They were a very good duo. And just generally speaking, Edwan got along with Jihad as they were climbing. And because of it, the Kuhn family remains, in my opinion, one of the more primary Jihad supporters. Now, maybe that's, you know, different behind the scenes. But from what I understand, the Kuhn family is pretty pro-Jihad in general. Chrono wanted to say hi. I think Luca, I'm not sure if Luca is in the panel as well. Hey, Luca. What's going on? You okay? You wanna say hi? Say hi, Chrono. Say hi. The Kuhn family is known for a lot of things. One of them is that Edwan has the most wives out of any of the ten families, and presumably out of any family or individual in the entire tower. We don't know the number, but he's got a lot of them. Now, they don't have the most children. That actually goes to Blood Matter, because Blood Matter has this curse where he has to have kids if he wants to, like, stay alive, which is pretty messed up, but he does have quite a few. And there's a flashback actually with Kuhn and Maria where Kuhn specifically says, if I considered you my sister, just because we have the same dad, I would have over 3,000 sisters. Now, we don't know if he's exaggerating here. It could be because, you know, it's in one of those like side, you know, it's like outside the bubble and usually that's for jokes and, the, and that sort of thing. But I do think, you know, it's probably somewhere around there. I mean, these families have been around for thousands and tens of thousands of years, so it wouldn't surprise me. Now, the Kuhn family is also known for uh, being lightning users. They use lightning shinsu, and the proper term for that, people who use lightning shinsu, they're known as jansolsas. I don't know if I'm saying that exactly right, but jansolsas are people who can use lightning shinsu. It's obviously not a common thing. Now, people outside the family can also use it, like Leiro Ro is a jansolsa, which is pretty interesting. But the Kuhn family, that's what they're known for. Now, that doesn't mean if you're a member of the Kuhn family, you have to use lightning shinsu. You could be a fighter who doesn't use that much shinsu. You know, we've seen Kuhns that don't really use shinsu that much, like Hotsling. Uh, we haven't really seen him fight, but you get what I mean. And then, of course, Aguero Añez uses ice shinsu, so you don't have to be a lightning user. Intelligent backstabbers. I would say intelligent backstabbers would be a good way to describe the Kuhn family. I mean, you could just think of any Kuhn and they've done something tricky or done some kind of backstabbing, you know? Even our main Kuhn, in his past, the reason he was like exiled from the family is because he wanted Maria to be the princess and he ended up betraying his own full-blooded sister. Now, this is a fact that you might not know about the Kuhn family. It's pretty messed up. They have this competition. When you hit 10 years old and you're a Kuhn kid, you have to fight other Kuhn kids. And the winner gets to receive the crest of the family. And the losers become abandoned. What? This is something that isn't talked about very often. I feel like this should be a well-known fact about the Kuhns, you know? And the fact that Edwan lets this happen. But yeah, they they don't necessarily kill each other, but it's pretty brutal, you know? They, they fight each other to remain in the family. Those who do, you're rewarded, let's go! And those who aren't, well, screw you. We don't know, like, who the abandoned are, because Kuhn's situation was different. Aguero Anya's situation was different. But maybe Hotsling is somebody who failed, and that's why he joined Walhaik Song. Or maybe he left of his own volition. We don't know. But, like, it's an interesting fact that there's, like, abandoned Kuhns out there. I should point out, Edwan himself 
isn't that interested in the process, he doesn't really care what goes on, he strikes me as the kind of guy who sits back, eats his grapes and drinks his grape juice, and he's like, whatever, you can do whatever you want. This ties also into the fact that the Kuhn family is very power hungry, particularly the wives of Edwan, they have this own internal competition with each other. It's not an official competition like what the kids do, but they do fight for power with each other. And there's a flashback with Kuhn's mother, I think she says she lost the fight for power or something. They compete to gain favor. Maybe the wives that are closest to Edwan, maybe their kids get special treatment, or maybe the wife gets special treatment, who knows. But overall, the Kuhn family is very well taught, they have classes, you know, they make sure you're well educated. I don't know if it's like required to go to class because we know that Aguero Anyas would skip class and go fishing, but that's just because, you know what, Aguero is too smart anyway. Edwan also has a treasury of items where he keeps hidden things that he's picked up and discovered during his climb, or maybe other Kuhn family members have, have acquired it and given it to Edwan, and Aguero actually snuck in at one time and stole Minbarandina. I have a feeling Edwan or whoever was guarding that treasury knew that Aguero did this, because it seems like someone who's not even a regular actually sneaking in and getting an item is pretty unlikely, but maybe, you know, maybe Aguero is just that big of a deal. Another Kuhn staple is the fact that a lot of them wear earrings. We know Aguero has, won, uh, has worn earrings at various times throughout the story. Um, of course, Asensio has just shown up again in Tower of God. By the way, totally not the only reason I'm making this video right now. Totally not the reason I'm feeling inspired to talk about the Kuhn family. And we also have seen uh, Edwan in, in the data floor. He wore earrings as well, and Hots likes to make fun of Kuhn for the fact that he wears earrings. The Kuhn family theme is based on the Argentina flag, which I think is really cool. That light blue color of their hair is based on Argentina, and that's also why a lot of the Kuhn names are like Spanish based, they sound Spanish, and a lot of the Kuhn attacks, like Ron's attacks, are Spanish. The Ha family and the Kuhn family don't really get along. I have a feeling it's because the Ha family is obviously their ideals are probably very different. Edwan is kind of a sleaze bag, and also they're very pro jihad. The Ha family, I have a feeling, is not as pro jihad. Uh, as far as maybe comparing it to the other families, but that's just speculation on my part. And now it's time for Rank That Coon, the part of the show where I rank the coons. Number 10, Maria. She sucks, she's kind of the worst, she backstabbed Aguero, I don't know, frick you Maria. Number 9, Coon Hind Luck. Honestly, we feel like we didn't really get to know this guy very much. Kind of felt for him a little bit, but he died. I don't really care that much. Rest in peace, luck. Number eight, Kun Royal Elliot. We barely saw him fight Evan Kell, but he's a ruler of the floor, which in and of itself is super badass. He also has like horns on his head that make me think he's kind of related to Endorsey. Maybe they both have some kind of racial trait to them, I don't know. Number seven, Kuhn Kisea, the cousin of Kuhn, who was raised as kind of a sister to him. Uh, she's super cute, so that's a thing. She's also really good at fighting, you know, and she has her own reasons and very believable reasons for doing the things that she does. I hope we get to meet her at some point in the actual story. Number six is Kuhn Hotsling, AKA Blueberry. I wish we saw more of this guy, I'm sure we will. Um, he's an expert hacker, super, super cool, part of Walhike's song. The anime kind of butchered his, like, whole character, but I do think that in the actual comic, he's pretty cool. Number five is Pobadao Liboric Kuhn. Now, we don't really know that much about Liboric at the moment, but even the little that we do know, the fact that he's Adori's right-hand man, he single-handedly took out a big part of the Hidden Grove, and the fact that he is a squadron commander now replacing Kalavan, yo, I don't know. And he's also part of Pobedow and Kuhn. This guy's a big deal. I can't wait to see more of Liboric. Number four is Kuhn Marco Asensio, the boy. And also, I'm not biased about the fact that he just had an awesome and epic return. Totally not. That, that has nothing to do with this high ranking. He chews bubble gum. He's freaking close with Mashani. He fought a big breeder on his own. Combine the data version of him with the current version, who is a legendary spear master. Bro, don't even get me started on a Kuhn Marco Asensio. Number three is Kuhn Edwan, the legend himself, leader of the Kuhn family. And dude, what can I say? Edwan is the leader of the Kuhn family. Um, he's kind of the worst, but the data version of him is really cool. I feel like he changed a lot, maybe along with the other leaders and Jihad, after they finished their climb. 
but we have to see how he is now. I have a feeling he's gonna be a lot different than when he was Data Edwan. Even that being said, though, just considering Data Edwan and what we know of current Edwan, he's an absolute awesome character. Number six in the entire tower, I love Edwan so much. Number two is Kun Mashani Jahad. I mean, we're getting a lot more of her in season three. She's a schemer, she betrayed Jin Sung, she's holding Jin Sung captive, and she's pulling a lot of these strings, and I don't know, man. Mashini should not be underestimated. She's made a bet with Yuri in the past, and she doesn't like Yuri very much. She has the yellow Mei. Are we gonna see the yellow Mei? I hope we do. That would be so cool. Number one is Kun Ron. Now, you might be wondering, wait, what about Aguero? And, you know, I totally didn't miscount in my top ten. We'll get to Aguero. Number one is Kun Ron, bro. Kun Ron is so awesome. He's one of my favorite, like, early season two characters. He was introduced and you're like, okay, another Kun character, and then he just steals the show every arc that he's in. Ron versus Anak is one of the best fights in the entire series, let alone the workshop battle. And of course, Ron versus Inietta is my favorite fight in the entire series. Ron's a beast, I love his character so much. It's just a shame we haven't seen him since Name Hunt Station. And finally, number zero, totally planned out well, is Kunaguero Anya's main character, schemer, plotter, intelligent dude, best friend to Bomb, and of course, companion of Rack and everybody else. He's the best, bro. He's always got a plan. He's always doing something. I do like the fact that he gained Ice Shinsu, and his Firefish is also really sweet. I don't have to say more. Kunaguero Anya's is one of the best characters in Tower of God, period. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Is there something I missed about the Kuhn family that you know of and I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments down below. And also subscribe if you wanna see more Tower of God content. Huge shout out to my patrons for always supporting me and sponsoring what I do here on the channel. If you enjoy Dungeons and Dragons, please do check out Towers and Gods. We're putting a lot of work into this series. And also, the more support we get, we might actually be able to do it a little bit more consistently. We might be making some changes, I don't know. Uh, you didn't hear that from me, but just let me know, and if you want to support the series, check the link down below, like the videos, and I think you'll really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. With that being said, I'll see you all in my next Tower of God video. Take care.